way I could be sure that the Qur'an is from God is I could say, I, I have read the Qur'an and studied it and I believed in it. It is the sort of book that if God was going to re reveal a book to human beings, the Qur'an is the very sort of book that God would reveal. How do you know that? How does a person, a stamp collector, how can a stamp collector look at a stamp and know pretty quickly whether this stamp is a fake or not? Whether it's genuine or not? It's something you know. When you study a subject and you study it thoroughly and you study it deeply, then you begin to realize what is true and what is false, what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. I mean, you know, that's initially, I would say, how did I know the Qur'an was from God? It's from that, from having read so many books and studied so many religions and been thrown many, through so many experiences. When I came to read the Qur'an, then I realized I'd come upon the genuine article. And my studies have only increased me in that conviction. The more I've studied the Qur'an, the more I've examined it. The Qur'an itself lays down a challenge. And it challenges people to to take this book and to read it either on your own or in pairs and to contemplate about, upon it and think about it. If this Qur'an was from other than God, you would find within it many discrepancies. Not only do we find in the Qur'an a lack of discrepancies, we find statements of a historical and scientific nature that it was not possible for someone to have known 1,400 years ago. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Then the Qur'an goes on to mention how God has made the heavens a roof well guarded that protects us and that also it mentions how God has placed in the earth mountains lest the earth should shake with you. So if we look in these verses we find even within those few verses some really amazing statements and, and uh, the Quran is alluding to what is known today as the common origin of the universe. The heavens and the earth were one united piece. This is something that is widely accepted now by scientists, what is known as the common origin of the universe. However, that's not something that was known or understood 1,400 years ago. Um, that the, 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 the heavens are a roof well guarded. Well, now we know that we have a layer of gas, the ozone layer, that filters out the harmful effects of the sun's radiation. The atmosphere itself acts as a barrier to meteors and meteorites that would otherwise impact on the earth and cause serious devastation yet 99.999 percent of them burn up in the atmosphere before they ever reach the earth so we find that the atmosphere is like a roof well guarded it protects us from the harmful effects of the sun's radiation it protects us from these meteors um, and then the another amazing thing about the mountains that the quran mentions uh, in, in another p place in the Qur'an, it references that the mountains have roots. Now that's something that we didn't know until recently, where we were able to bounce sound waves down through the Earth's crust, and at the different rates at which the sound waves were refracted, we know about the different density of the rock material. And by doing that, we discovered that the mountains, especially continental mountains, have roots that go down into the Earth's magna. And some scientists actually believe that these act as a stabilizing factor in the Earth's crust. Now, these are things being mentioned in the Qur'an 1,400 years ago. How could Muhammad have possibly known about things like that? We find that where the Bible proves to be inaccurate, the Qur'an proves to be accurate. Uh, so this flies in the face of such claims. Uh, and apart from anything else, we have no real evidence that any Bible existed in Arabic at that time. Uh, and since the Prophet Muhammad couldn't read and couldn't write, from where, or where could he have possibly gathered such information from? He was not a learned person. He was not even literate. So where did he get all this information from? 
We find the Qur'an in Islam contains detailed theological arguments, in fact philosophical arguments, it, it contains details of jurisprudence, it contains scientific knowledge and data. From where did Muhammad gather all of this information? Can anyone name the individuals who taught him? From where was he getting all this knowledge? And of course, um, these questions are not, uh, I'm not the first one to raise these questions. These questions themselves have been asked by those very people, those protagonists uh, of Islam. They have been asking these self same questions. Now, some of them claim that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, you know, learned this from some rabbi or some priest, some Nestorian monk, but yet we can't find any evidence that he had such a source of information. And this is something that was put forward by the old Christian polemicists against Islam. They were claiming exactly that, that Muhammad was a liar, that he had invented Islam, that it was, even some of them considered a sort of deviated sect of Christianity. The arguments now have become more sophisticated, they've taken a different turn. And so many of the, many of the modern polemicists against Islam are now claiming that well, an examination of the source texts that we have and the source information that we have about the life of Prophet Muhammad doesn't lead us to believe that he was taking this information from anywhere. Um, in fact, what we can see about his life, that he was truthful, he was honest, he was sincere. In fact, even before he was a prophet, he was called Al-Amin, which means the truthful and the trustworthy. So, they say that this truthfulness and honesty of the Prophet Muhammad that we can see evident in his life doesn't suggest that he was a liar and he was a deceiver and that he had been inventing this religion of Islam. Rather, they say that he obviously really believed it and he really did believe that he was a prophet of God. But then some of them say, well, it was the voice of the subconscious. Nature was speaking to him, all sorts of, you know, um, quasi psychological, mystical type of explanations. But this, of course, still is not acknowledging that Muhammad was, in fact, receiving revelation from the Creator of the heavens and the earth. It is like saying he was deceived, he was deluded, he was sincere, he really believed it, but of course, he wasn't getting revelation from God. But the problem with that is, is that that doesn't explain where the information comes from. If Prophet Muhammad was deluded, if he just imagined that he was a prophet, he was suffering from some sort of psycho psychological condition, then it still doesn't explain where the, all the information, the legal, scientific, historical, uh, theological information the Qur'an contains, where did it come from? In other words, they need him to be a liar to explain the information in the Qur'an, because he must have got it from somewhere. And they need him to be deluded in order to explain his obvious and apparent sincerity and truthfulness. Yet someone can't be a liar and be deluded both at the same time. Because a person who thinks, for example, if you ask me a question, and I say, oh yes, God will reveal that question to me, I think God's speaking to me, then I don't need to go run away and consult my rabbi or my priest or whoever it is to give me the answer. I don't need to do that because I think that God is going to give me the answer. So you can't be deluded and be a liar at the same time. But the only way really to explain the information that the Prophet Muhammad had access to and to explain his sincerity is the third alternative. The way we can explain both is the information was from God and his sincerity and truthfulness was because he knew that he was a messenger of God and that God was revealing this knowledge to him. And there we have a simple explanation for the, both the information in the Qur'an and the truthfulness and sincerity of the Prophet Muhammad. In other words, the conclusion is that the Qur'an is exactly what it claims to be in Muhammad is exactly what he did claim to be, a prophet of God.